For the altitude adjustment, we're going to do exactly the same kind of thing, but with the slightly different shaped motor carrier. So this is the carrier that has a little extra spur sitting on the side of it. And this is going to eventually, although the, the two holes don't look the same size, this is eventually going to sit here and engage with a gear that attaches into that. But first we have to build another sub-assembly that this will connect to. We start the sub-assembly by making a miniature version of one of these that we produced at the very beginning of the build. So it's going to have to be a lot smaller to fit inside the altitude mechanism. We start with cutting about a, an 80 millimeter shaft. This has to be the same diameter as the bore on the drive wheel. So in the same way as we did at the beginning, this could be five mil or six mil typically. So whichever version you've got, you're going to need a shaft that matches that. And you're going to need one to print one of these very tiny herringbone gears, again with a hole inside to match. So either a five mil or a six mil hole there are STL files available for both sizes. Before you actually assemble the shaft, just make sure you understand which way around this gear wheel goes. It's going to engage with these teeth here and make sure that you have it facing the right direction so that it engages properly. If you have it the other way around, it'll just slide across the top. It won't actually engage with the gears. That's because we've got these herring, herringbone patterns on the gears. So make sure it's the correct way around and then you know which way to insert it onto the shaft. With the drive wheel pushed firmly onto the end of the shaft, we're going to use this sub-assembly piece to actually hold the shaft perpendicular to the, uh, the, the inner wall of the telescope. And this is actually going to connect, it's just going to push quite nicely into this circular hole here and it will hold the drive shaft and the drive wheel firmly against the, the inner cog which will raise the telescope up and down on the altitude. So we'll just have a look at how we assemble this and hold it all in place with the bearings. You'll see if you examine this that there are a couple of recesses, one in here and one in here, where you can actually place a couple of the RC bearings and they'll hold the shaft in a much more rigid position as it goes through. And these will just be a push fit. These are a nice tight push fit into those recesses. By magic, these are the two bearings already placed into the, the recesses there. So the shaft will actually slide quite nicely onto the bearings as necessary. What we have to do now is add a drive wheel and again a couple of small collars just to hold everything firmly in place. So there you can see there's a collar, a drive wheel and a collar and once we insert those in the mechanism we can select the correct position for each of these so that the shaft is held tightly and the drive wheel we can then move to wherever we need to to position it and then just tighten them up using a little allen key in each of these three little grub screws. So I haven't tightened these up yet because we're going to need to position things a little bit more carefully when we put this onto the, the motor holder. But you can see there the two collars and the drive wheel sitting in there ready to be tightened up when the positioning's finally set. And there's enough movement on the shaft that we can, we can place the drive wheel correctly against the, the teeth on the altitude bracket. The next task is then to mate the motor holder and this sort of assembly together so they'll engage through this little hole at the base, this circular hole. They should clip together quite nicely and you can see that basically we can we can adjust everything here. We can adjust the position of the shaft, the drive wheel and the angle between these two so that the drive wheel, this, this worm gear and the, the, the brass cog that it engages with will actually all knit together quite nicely and this can be slid backwards and forwards on the shaft so that you get a, a correct engagement against the, the gear wheel. This is the two pieces then connected together with the um, support arm just bolted in just to show how it would fit if you need to use that. 
this makes the whole thing very secure. It, it sort of doesn't really flex very much at all. There's a little bit of movement here where the two sides clip together, but we're about to bolt this whole thing securely to the, the telescope body, which will really secure everything at that point. So the, the altitude gear and motor should start to look like this at this point. You can see the drive wheel at the end, which is going to insert into the uh, body of the, te of the telescope and actually drive the camera cradle up and down for the altitude. The drive wheel is going to engage with these teeth on the inside here. And this hole, this, this circle here rather, is going to insert into that hole there. So you can simply plug the two together and it should be a fairly snug fit um, but we are going to secure it with a bolt afterwards. And then what you do is just allow this body to rotate and make sure that the drive wheel on the inside engages with the teeth of the, the telescope, the camera cradle. You'll feel it engage and then this camera cradle will suddenly become locked in place. And then finally what you do is just insert a bolt in the, in the slot at the top here and another one in the slot at the bottom here. Secure those two down into place and then this is really rigid and it can't move any further. And there we are, that's the drive in place. So now the azimuth drive which does the left right movement is all in place, the altitude drive is in place and you should find that really there's very little movement in the telescope body now because everything's being held in place by the motors. So the next thing is to bring us some motion by attaching the electronics to it.